Hey, Fiona here. Have you ever wondered what's at the bottom of the ocean? What do you think the sea floor is made of? Well, there's a ton of sand, but underneath all that sand, the sea floor is made up of rocks, just like the rest of the Earth's surface. It made me wonder, do oceans have their own tectonic plates? And if so, how do these plates affect the sea floor and the rest of the Earth? In today's expedition, we're going to use good old fashioned scientific inquiry to get to the bottom of this mystery. Ready, geologists? Let's dive in. To begin our journey, we need to first rewind to the 1950s when scientists began mapping the ocean floor using sonar. Sonar is a tool that bounces sound waves off the bottom of the ocean in order to create a visual model. One of the most striking things scientists discovered from this early model was a massive range of underwater mountains that divide the Atlantic Ocean in half now known as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It wraps around the entire globe like the seam of a baseball, extending for roughly 40,000 miles. And within the ridge itself, another important clue emerged, volcanic activity. Scientists also noticed that the seafloor's age increased the farther away it was from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This led scientists to ask some important questions. How was the Mid-Atlantic Ridge formed? And how does it affect the sea floor? While pondering these questions, one scientist named Henry H. Hess formulated a new hypothesis, sea floor spreading. Hess proposed that magma from Earth's mantle escapes along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. As the magma is cooled by the ocean and hardens into rock, it forms brand new pieces of Earth's crust. This new crust pushes the existing seafloor away from the ridge like a giant conveyor belt in both directions. In short, seafloor spreading is the process by which new oceanic crust is formed at mid-ocean ridges and gradually spreads outward. Over time, this process also pushes the continents. Hmm, moving continents. Where have we heard this before? That's right, the hypothesis of continental drift and the theory of plate tectonics. C4 spreading eventually became valuable evidence to support both of these ideas. This is because the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is actually formed by a continuous series of plate boundaries in the Atlantic. Remember what the three kinds of plate boundaries are? There are divergent, convergent, and transform boundaries. If C4 spreading spreads the plates in the Atlantic apart, what kind of boundary do you think exists here at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? Pause and record your thoughts in your notes. Since spreading apart means to separate or diverge, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a divergent boundary. As the plates pull apart and magma escapes, seafloor spreading creates mountains and volcanoes along the ridge while also producing minor earthquakes. Sound familiar? It's just like when I explored Iceland in the last lesson. That's because Iceland is actually part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge itself. It's an island formed entirely by layers of magma from seafloor spreading. Iceland just happens to be the only part of the ridge tall enough to break the surface of the ocean. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so divergent boundaries under the ocean constantly create new seafloor, and in some cases, islands. But where does the existing seafloor go? Hmm, 
Well, volcanic activity is what created the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, so maybe volcanoes can provide more clues. Looking at this map of volcanoes around the ocean, shown in dark red, where do you think we should head next, geologists? Wow, there's a whole giant ring of volcanoes in the Pacific. Seems awfully suspicious. But it's so far away. Oh, I know. B is near the Pacific coast. She can investigate for us. I'm counting on you, B. Thanks, Fiona. Geologists, welcome to Washington State, home of the most destructive volcano in U.S. history, Mount St. Helens, located in the... Pacific Ring of Fire! If we cross-reference the Ring of Fire with a map of plate boundaries shown in white, what do you think we'll find? Yep, the Ring of Fire is made up of plate boundaries. To understand what's happening here, first we need to know what kind of plate boundary we're dealing with. Let's look at the landscape of the surrounding continent for clues. On this topographical map of the Americas on the left, the darker areas represent mountain ranges. What observations do you have about their location? Record them in your guided notes. The mountain ranges are clustered on the coast near the plate boundaries. Hmm, mountains. I seem to recall a particular type of plate boundary that is responsible for these. Do you remember what it is, geologists? That's right, a convergent boundary can create mountains when plates collide and buckle upward. So, does that mean the ocean along the coast is full of mountains as well? Is that where the seafloor goes? Hmm. I don't see any out there. Luckily, I have this handy map that can provide us with some clues. What observations do you have about the seafloor in the Ring of Fire, geologists? Pause and record them in your notes. I'm noticing a lot of trenches, which are long, narrow valleys in the sea floor. They're the deepest parts of the ocean, basically the opposite of mountains. These trenches seem to occur exclusively at convergent plate boundaries. Huh, so the plates on land have mountains on them, just like the previous convergent boundaries we've studied. However, the plates in the ocean have deep trenches instead. Do oceanic plates maybe have different properties than plates on land? Turns out, they do. Continental plates, which make up the continents, are much thicker than their ocean counterparts. On the other hand, Oceanic plates, which carry Earth's oceans, are thinner and denser than continental plates. So, what does this have to do with trenches? Remember, denser objects tend to sink below less dense objects. Here, off the coast of Washington, seafloor spreading is slowly moving the denser oceanic plate and the less dense continental plate into each other. As these plates collide, what do you think happens to the oceanic plate? Pause the video and record your thoughts in your guided notes. The denser oceanic plate sinks below the continental plate, while the continental plate is pushed upward. This process is called subduction. When the continental plate is pushed up, it creates mountains, like the Cascade Range behind me. And when the oceanic plate is shoved down, it creates trenches in the ocean. When the oceanic plate is pushed deep enough, it's exposed to the molten heat of the asthenosphere, 
causing it to melt back into the earth. In this way, seafloor spreading and subduction create a continuous cycle. As new seafloor is created, the oldest parts of the oceanic plates are destroyed and recycled. This melting of oceanic plates creates excess magma and pressure, resulting in, you guessed it, volcanoes like Mount St. Helens behind me. But mountains and volcanoes aren't the only consequences of subduction. During subduction, when an oceanic plate is forced underneath a continental plate, sometimes the plates become gridlocked. Eventually, the plates break free, resulting in a large and sudden movement. The resulting shock waves create... That's right! Earthquakes! For example, the state of Washington often has one or more earthquakes a day. Most of these are very small, but in 2001, a magnitude 6.8 quake struck near Olympia, resulting in major damage to the area. And earthquakes can have additional consequences when they occur in the ocean. When something as large as a tectonic plate moves underwater, what do you think happens to the water's surface? The water moves as well, which can create giant waves called tsunamis. Some of these waves can reach over 30 feet high. A recent and notable example of this is the tsunami in Japan in 2011, which resulted in hundreds of billions of dollars worth of damage. Those are some really big consequences, considering tectonic plates only move a few centimeters per year. This is all the more reason for geologists to keep a careful eye on subduction zones. This helps us better predict and prepare for large-scale disasters in the future. All right, Fiona, back to you. Thanks, B. Woo, we covered quite a lot on our journey today. Let's briefly review. Sea floor spreading is a process where escaping magma pushes oceanic plates outward along ocean ridges. When these oceanic plates converge into continental plates, subduction occurs, forcing the denser oceanic plate beneath the continental plate and back into the earth. This can cause a variety of consequences, such as the formation of volcanoes and mountains, as well as the occurrence of earthquakes and tsunamis. Next time, we'll discuss how geological processes create different kinds of rocks. Until then, remember, small shifts can create big changes, so don't underestimate the impact you can have. Stay observant, keep asking questions, and I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.